Hey guys, this is Cruising Kaik here. Uh, today we're going to be talking to you about the worst things that have happened to us in the six or so months that we've been on the road. Uh, probably the worst thing that's happened so far is that we had a blowout of two of our rear tires uh, during a trip between Albuquerque and Flagstaff. Uh, at that point, thankfully, we are on the highway and we're able to pull over. Uh, and also, this was a section that was heavily patrolled by the police and a very nice officer uh, swung around and that made sure that we were okay and uh, then escorted us um, with his lights on behind us uh, to the nearest exit where we could pull over and then assess what happened. Uh, basically, uh, we just heard a loud bang. Um, what happened was that, if I remember correctly, one tire just completely blew out, probably threw a bunch of tread over to another tire, which then caused that one to uh, blow out. Uh, again, thankfully, it was two of our rear tires, uh, which we have four rear tires, so we were able to limp home uh, or limp to the next exit. Um, once we got there, we got on the horn with insurance, see what roadside coverage we have, everything like that. And I'll interrupt Michael because uh, I think part of the funny parts were of this situation, because I know that this is a horrible situation to be in, but the funny part was we pull over to the side of the road, we have semis passing us, the shoulder is very tiny, big RV, barely fit, and I'm thinking, boy, I really should call the uh, local police. I don't know their number, so I'm going to start Google searching it. Like, uh, maybe 500,000 feet in front of us, we can see a police officer watching our traffic for, like, speeders. And I'm like, I wish there was a way to tell him that we kind of need him. <laughs> uh, and then he drove away, and I was still trying to find the local number for the police. And... Um, we had a police officer pull up behind us, and when he came up to the window, I was like, I was just about to call you guys, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. And very convenient. Thank you. I don't know which state we were in. Arizona, probably, at that point? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Arizona State Patrol. So, yeah. thank you, guys. Thank you for helping us get to the next exit. Yep. But uh, once we got to the next exit, uh, we found out that the most... The next available um, repair. Oh, so the closest uh, shop that could help us uh, was a commercial tire center in the next town over. Um, unfortunately, that was about an hour's drive away, but the uh, and the only uh, mobile uh, tire truck that they had was in another town an hour further away from that. And so he had to get from there back to the shop, pick up two tires that worked for us, and then make it to us, uh, which he was an absolute godsend. But uh, what Michael's not telling you is that we sat on the side of the road for, what, six to ten hours, somewhere around there? Um, I think we were on the side of the road for a good five hours before he showed up. Five hours. It felt like ten. Yep. But five hours. It was dark by the time this guy got to yep. us. And then, of course, once he started, then it started raining and just one of those just not very fun situations. But thankfully, we were able to uh, get the tires replaced and then make it to the next town, uh, which we didn't book a campsite or anything like that. We just found a hotel. Um, I think we got into the hotel at about 1 a.m. with the birds. Uh, slept until basically checkout because we were so exhausted. Um, and then made our way back to the same commercial tire center where we were able to get new tires on all the wheels and then know that we're just good for the next five years, knock on wood. Um, but yeah, that was definitely a situation where we were thinking, okay, well, our, do we have to boondock this on the side of the highway, or how are we going to get this fixed? But, mind you, being on the side of the highway in an RV, not the worst thing. We have a generator, we have a refrigerator, we have a bathroom. We still had some a little bit of water. Yep. Um, worst comes to worst, we could lock up, and we could uh, take the car off the tow dolly and get whatever provisions we need. And then come back. I mean, that's the great part about pulling a car behind you is the fact that you can just 
quickly take it off and say, you know what, we'll come back to this when we when we have a second. But thankfully, it didn't have to come to that. Yep. So that was probably our worst experience in the RV so far. Yep. So even or if you're looking to buy a motorhome or a, a fifth wheel or anything like that, just double tr and triple check the tires because we think that the tires blew out because they were just old even though we had a shop um, look at the motorhome before we purchased it and they uh, were saying the tires looked great but obviously this proves that just if you're buying a used rv just buy new tires i mean it didn't cost us that much no i mean for six tires i think the cost of the parts was maybe seven hundred dollars so that's not horrible no and I mean, that's, like I said, six tires that are 10-ply rated for a 9,000-pound motorhome. So that's pretty good. Yep. But, uh... So that was the worst thing that happened. Yep. The first thing that happened was, I'll just admit, completely my fault. Um, we were learning all about the motorhome, and uh, we were uh, ready to pop in the bedroom mm -hmm. uh, on our uh, motorhome. Uh, the bedroom has an adjoining bathroom with a, I'll call it a folding door where it just folds uh, in half and then scoots right next to the bed. Uh, as we were popping in, I didn't realize that it wasn't completely secured either in an open or closed position. And so as we were popping in, I hear a crunch or just a loud noise. They stop and look that the door had started coming off the hinge, uh, off the wall a little bit and the screws had been <laughs> pulled out. Uh, thankfully, what had actually happened was that the hinge is just one really long hinge that runs the whole entire length of the door. And there are probably 10 or 20 screws that holds it to the wall. And so it actually, the screw heads had come off the metal portion of the hinge and not actually out of the wall. So as I, I was able just to buy some new washers uh, to be able to fill the gap and be able to... So when you're looking for a RV spot, just be consider, uh, just look maybe a little bit if you care about train noises, because this is not the first time that we've had this. Also, I want to say that we probably only have one RV park that didn't have a train running right next to it. Yeah, just know if you're a light sleeper or that. Be wary of that. Also, we were in an RV park that um, the, was right by a large corner where trucks would have to put on their air brakes or also called a jake brake. Uh, the, when you hear trucks going down and go, blah, 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 that's their air brake to help them slow down. And it just but you're all off track. or on um, times of the night they do that. But anyway, getting back to some of the worst things that's happened uh, with the bedroom, I was able to get washers and I was able to just use that to fill in the hole on the metal portion of the hinge, and it's working great now. So just a little bit of ingenuity to uh, fix my mess up. And now we always remember to close the door when we pop our bedroom pop in back in. Yep. Uh, and then a recent one that we <laughs> just did. Right here in Buffalo. Yep. Was that uh, one morning I used the restroom and the flap on the toilet was closed, but the water didn't uh, completely turn off. Uh, thankfully, we woke up about and like an hour later. I woke up later. about an hour and a half later because I wanted yeah. to use the restroom. So and I stopped. I go over and the carpet's all wet and I'm like, sleep, sleep fogged. I don't know what's going on. And then I'm like, there's water all over the floor. Thankfully, Michael jumped out of bed and flushed the toilet, which drained all the water and the toilet bowl. So that way it stopped because I did not think about doing that. Yeah. But uh, we still had to clean up all the water that had dripped uh, out. Yeah. Well, first what I did was got out of bed, checked to make sure it wasn't the black tank that was full, and then I flushed it to make sure that we wouldn't get any sewage that acted, make sure it wasn't, you know, the black tank that was just all the way full, and that was the problem, so. Thankfully the water was very clean, so yes. I, I didn't think it was the black tank at that point. Um, but we were able to stop the water, got towels, cleaned that up, 
Um, it had dripped underneath the sink and into the outside compartments a little bit. Uh, we called a uh, mobile RV maintenance um, company. They said that there's really not much that they could be doing, especially since it's just the first time. If it's a chronic problem, then they could see what they can do, but just dried it out. Uh, we got a box fan to be able to dry out the carpet and knock on wood. We haven't seen any damage since then. No, nope. it looks like the RV took a bunch and rolled with it. Thank goodness, because I was worried there. Because we actually have water dripping on the outside of the RV from the inside. So it was looked a lot worse <laughs> than it ended up in being, but yep. everything worked out there. Yep. And then, not quite sure how this next one happened, uh, but when we were in Colorado, uh, first getting used to the RV, I believe it was... It, um, it was when we were in that state park. Um, yeah. Uh, Chatfield, Chatfield, state Chatfield State Park. park. Uh, noticed that the hydraulic system wasn't, or the hydraulic leveling system wasn't the happy, happiest, and uh, it was leaking a little bit of fluid. Um, and so we just stopped using it for a while because it wasn't really working. And eventually, uh, we had when we had the blowout in well, Arizona. It was a little bit more dramatic than that. We spewed hydraulic fluid all over that spot in uh, Chatfield Park, um, which thankfully they did not charge us for because I was really <laughs> afraid they were going to charge us for that. But uh, I was looking at the hydraulics uh, at the jacks as Michael was lowering it and all of a sudden just a stream of hydraulic fluid just came out and we decided to pull it back up and not use the jacks at that moment yep. uh, but we eventually took it to uh, Camping World to get it fixed yep which <laughs> that after... ended up being a problem <laughs> yep which the story is too long to get into in yep. one video but suffice it to say, thankfully we were in Tennessee with my parents. We were able to stay with them. It took about two months to fix uh, because we were, Camping World was having some issues with some of their suppliers and distributors. So it wasn't Camping World's fault, it was the supplier's end. Uh, but eventually we got it all sorted out and it's working now. But that was a massive headache. Um, and we just had the whole entire system just had to be replaced. Uh, what had happened was that um, the system was over pressurized, which then uh, put bubbles into the lines um, and caused a leak. And um, so, yeah, that's where just everything had to be replaced. That ended up costing a pretty penny. Um, that was not fun to replace, but I mean, you kind of have to, so you do it. Yep. Um, and and the way that we look at it is since that we're full timing, this is both a home and a vehicle. And so whatever cost you'd incur, if you have your own house and a vehicle, that's where they're kind of all in one. And so you should be preparing for uh, emergencies and things to break anyways. And, and I mean, we did get this, we got it checked out before we bought it and everything had looked fine, supposedly. Um, because I mean, I, I, I'm not an RV person. I don't know what to look for. Uh, so I assume they did it properly, but it just goes to show that anything can happen. And if yep. you're buying a used RV, make sure you have a little bit of money in your bank account because you might need to repair something at some point. And, um, but now that we've fixed all these major issues, we're hoping that the next six months will go pretty easy. I mean, so far it's been easy and we've been on the road. Since we got the hydraulic system fixed, what, two or three months now? Yep. And everything's like been smooth sailing for the most part. Yep. So. And while we were in uh, freezing weather, uh, we got some really neat shots out in Chatfield State Park when it was all snowy. Uh, the hydraulic system does use automatic transmission fluid, and so I don't think it was an icing issue because ATF, or uh, automatic transmission fluid, should be good down to very low temperatures, much lower than you should experience in Colorado during the winter. Yeah. Um, so that, so I chalk it up as a, this motorhome is 10 years old now. Things just wear out over time. Very could easily be a sensor broke over the 10 years that it's, uh, since it was built and it got too much pressure. And so 
uh, lesson learned. Um, also, an experience that we had with the leveling system is that the automatic part is not, we don't really trust it. Uh, sometimes we feel that so it gets the, the front end too high. The hydraulic system that we have on our RV is able to lift the entire RV off its wheels. Um, as we discussed with somebody over at Camping World, we should probably not do that. Well, we didn't do that before it broke, and we haven't done it since it broke, but um, they were just letting us know that the new hydraulic system that we have on here is powerful enough to lift the whole RV up on the uh, leveling jacks, but that we should not do that because it's just better to have the weight distributed on wheels and hydraulic jacks because you don't want to uh, stress them out with too much weight. Yep, but and I figure the leveling system is just that it's supposed to level. Uh, it does provide a lot more stability, but still, uh, whether it's just the six point of contacts of only the wheels or the four point of contacts of only the leveling system, um, more is better in this case, and so having all six wheels and then all four points of contact for the leveling system gives us ten points of contact and just stabilizes the motor home a lot better. Yep. Um, we'll probably make a video about the leveling system and how we manually level it, level it uh, some of the tips and tricks that we've come up with uh, in a later video. Uh, but I think that's about it right now for what's gone wrong so far. And this is in no way to persuade you not to do RVing. We just want to make sure that you're aware that things will go wrong, yep. but don't let it get to you. I mean, things go wrong in a house. We had several things go wrong in our house, and we yep. still had the house. So, yep. you know, just keep, just keep driving on. Yep, I mean, leveling system went wrong on this. Um, we had a pipe freeze and burst. Uh, on New Year's Eve one night for our house and so stuff just goes wrong and just need to take care of it. Yep, in general. And that was yep. in the house, not in the RV. The pipe yep, pipe. that was in the house. So, so yeah, anyways, yep. we will think about some more videos to get up for you guys, but in the meantime, enjoy this and let us know if there's any questions or comments that you guys have. Yep, unfortunately we don't have Kumquat out here to say goodbye, but he's inside probably just waiting for, for us to get back inside. Just a little bit too hot for Kumquat right now.